Hello and welcome to a new video about standard elements in control engineering. This time we're going to start to combine elements. Last time we had the PT1 element and we said the PT1 element is helping us to make the idealized elements a little bit more real, more realistic. And since I also mentioned the derivation element is the element which is far away from being real eh, compared to the other elements, eh, we will start with this. So we will use a PT1 element to somehow make a derivation element a little bit more realistic. So we are talking, we are combining a D and a PT1 and the result is a so-called DT1 element. So we're talking about a DT1. Element. We're simply combining those two here. There's the D element, there's the PT1 element, and the result is the DT1 element. How do we combine them? Well, we combine them in the following matter. So there is a D element there's a PT1 element so this here is a D this here is a PT1 and those two are serious to each other. So there is again the input, there is again the output. So here we have xi from s, here we have xo from s, and now let's Think about, let's remind us what are the transfer functions. This was the transfer function of the D element. Yeah. So we'll now call this GD equals S multiplied by KD. Okay. And this was the transfer function of a, DT, a PT1 element. This one, yeah. so I will call this GT1, and I will not call this K, I will call this also KT so that we can distinguish between the two Ks 1 plus ST. Yeah. So these are the two transfer functions. Yeah. So, what is then the total transfer function? Serious approach, we said, okay, we have simply to multiply those two things. So this G from S is GD from S multiplied by this GT1 from S. So this is S multiplied by KD multiplied by KT divided by 1 plus ST. Oh, just bring this bring this up. So this is uh, S K D and now the remaining part is from the PT1 K T divided by 1 plus S T. Yeah. And here we have a constant multiplied with a constant. This is simply a constant. And the, the remaining the resulting transfer function is some k multiplied by s, the upper part, divided by 1 plus st. Okay. This, is the, this is the transfer function of a dt1 element. Okay. Now let's have a look what it means for the frequency response. We said we could formally exchange this s with j omega. Here we have j omega k now. Yeah. 
Yeah? And down here we have 1 plus j omega t. Okay. Let's again have a look how this looks if we take a peek into the imaginary and real axis. The upper part, this part here. J omega k. J is an imaginary up. Here we are somewhere at omega k. Yeah? So this will this will be this this number. Yeah? The lower part. A different color. This one. The lower part is this. Yeah. So it's one. Here's one. Plus j omega t. So up omega t. This shall be j omega t. So we have this. This one. Huh? Okay, what does it mean for the, for the absolute value? The absolute value is the absolute value of the above divided by the absolute value of the below. The absolute value of the above is, well, omega k. Huh? Omega k divided by the square root of 1 squared uh, plus omega t squared. Okay. This is the absolute value. Uh, and now let's have a look at the argument. That's the angle above minus the angle below. Yeah. The angle above j omega k will be 90 degree minus, and now this one, arcus tangens. Again, if we want to know this angle here, this divided by 1, yeah, so omega t divided by 1, which is actually 90 degree minus arcus tangens from omega t. So these are these are the two the two values, right? So let's again have a look to the extremes. Let's have a look at omega equals zero and omega equals infinity. At omega zero, we have this will be zero, zero divided by one is zero. So the absolute value of zero is zero. And now what means infinity? Infinity divided by infinity. That's an issue. I show you a little trick. This one, I will simply divide with j omega above and below. Yeah? So above there will be j omega k divided by j omega and below 1 plus j omega t divided by j omega. So I have j omega added on both sides. So this is k divided by 1 divided by j omega plus t. Okay? And now, if I now put omega to infinity, this will get to zero, and what remains is k divided by t. So, the absolute value at the frequency unlimited is k divided by t. Okay? 
Now let's have a look at the at the argument at omega zero arcus tangens from zero. If this is if this is zero, uh, omega t is zero, then this is this is 90 degree uh, minus zero is 90 degree. Argument is 90 degree. Uh, because this 90 degree you cannot get rid. Arcus tangens from zero is zero, 90 minus zero is 90 degree. And add unlimited. Now look at this again. Look at this again. This will grow. Whoop! It will remain 90 degree. This will grow also. This will remain constant, this one. And, but however, if this grows to infinity, this will also get 90 degree. So 90 degree minus 90 degree is 0 degree. Huh? So the argument from G at the frequency of unlimited is 0 degree. So this is how, how a DT1 element looks like. Transfer function. These are the two in series, two things in series switched. And yeah, this is the result. Now again, let's have again a look how this looks like in our Bode plot and the step response. Okay. Let's try this. So we said we do have the DT1 element. And we said the transfer function equals Ks. 1 plus st, yeah. this means yeah. and we also said we also said the absolute value is omega k divided by the square root 1 plus omega t squared yeah. and the argument is 90 degree minus arcus tangens from omega t. This is our, these are all the numbers we are going to work with. Let's have a look at the let's have a look at the step response. Here at the beginning, when nothing is entered, nothing is the result. Yeah? And now I again mention it at exactly this point in time where we are jumping, we have a frequency of unlimited. We just thought about what happens with the absolute value of frequency unlimited. There is no latency. K divided by T is the value. So we end up at some number here uh, and this is exactly k divided by t. Okay. So we're going to jump there. Whoop. Uh, so what the pt1 element made out of our peak to the infinity, peak to the stars from the d element, from the derivation element, there is only remaining a small portion of it. Uh, and furthermore, we're not now crashing again to the ground level. We do it gently. We do it damped with the damping time constant of the PT1 element. So let's again assume this here is T. So I will again use 10. Then we have exactly the other way around. So here we are at around two thirds. Here we are finished, so we are going to get close to this. Yeah? So this time it looks like this. This is the typical step response of a TT1 element. Hmm? 
And now, let's have a look. Let's have a look at the, freq at the, at the frequency response. Let's again put this in two pieces. Huh? Because I could write this as k multiplied by s multiplied, and now I can take the brown one, 1 divided by 1 plus st. So this here is a d element, and this here is a pt1 element with k1. Okay? There's a multiplication. Okay. Look at this. K1 is exactly this. Yeah. And now let's remember what a PT1 element looks like. Yeah. PT1 element looks like this. I have the same T. I also used here 10. So this exactly, exactly looks like this. However, it will start at 1 because K is 1. So we are here. Yeah. And at the characteristic frequency of 1 divided by t, yeah, t is 10, we will start to drop here. So this is the pt1 part, yeah, this brown part. And here we are at 0 degree. Yeah, then here, at the characteristic frequency, we are at minus 45, and then later, we are at 90 degree. Yeah. So, in total, we would look like this, somehow. The PT1 bar. Yeah. And then, we have the D part. Also remember the D part. Here we got it. Yeah. K, S with K. Yeah. And where was this, this frequency where we got 1? That 1 divided by KD. Okay. 1 divided by KD. So, what is K in our case? T was 10. K divided by 10 is 30, so K must be a uh, 3, K must be 30. I already told you that. <laughs> I already calculated in my head, right? So 10, something divided by 10 must be 3, so this something is 30. Yeah? And 1 divided by 30 is around 0 0.03. Around 0 0.03. Yeah? 0 0.01, 0 0.03. 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 here, here, we will reach 1, yeah? and 10 times higher, we will be... So this here... This here is the D element. Okay, this is the D element. Down here, we are at plus 90 degree. This is... This is the D element. And now, we only have to find out the multiplication of those two. So we are... We are... There's a point, huh? multiply. And I can tell you, in a double logarithmic scale or the logarithmic scale, a multiplication looks like a shift. So here, yeah, look at this. Here's the one line. Yeah? Something uh, multiplied by one will remain the something. We are not shifting it somewhere. Yeah? If this would be higher, we would shift it up. If it would be below 1, we would shift it down. However, we are exactly at 1, so it will remain the same. So this something multiplied by 1 stays something. Yeah? 
This is true until exactly here. This here is our, our characteristic frequency omega g. And this omega g, remember where was the band? If you look again at the pt1 element, this was 1 divided by t. So this is here also 1 divided by t at a tenth. What is happening here? What is happening here? We have to summarize those two. Yeah? Let's say here we do have a certain gain factor of x, however high this now is. Yeah? Here we have a certain gain factor of, I'll use a different color, which one? This one, of y, here. Yeah? So the total, the total gain is x multiplied by y. Okay. At 10 times more frequency, I have in my deal man 10 times more. Here is 10x. The gain factor is 10x here. Okay. At the PT1 element, at 10 times more frequency, here the gain factor is only 1 divided by 10. Okay. So this is 10 x, this is, one, uh, this is y divided by 10. Yeah. And the total factor is again the multiplication of those two. So we have 10x multiplied by y divided by 10. Ooh, and the 10 is gone. So this will remain constant. Yeah, this will remain constant. Because a, if the gain is rising, factor 10 and the other gain is dropping factor 10, nothing much will change. Eh? So we will stay here, beginning from here, from this characteristic frequency omega g, we will stay here constant. Okay? We we'll stay here constant. This is always the case. If something is rising and the same, uh, and another thing is dropping exactly the same steepness, yeah, then it will remain constant. Yeah. So, which frequency do we have here? Yeah. This was omega d. Yeah. Omega d. Let's have a look again. Here. Omega d was 1 divided by kd. So in our case, omega d is 1 divided by k. Okay? Omega d is 1 divided by k. And now, I want to know how, where do we end up here? Where is this line? Where? Since I know the gain is rising. If I double the frequency, I have double the gain. If I triple the frequency, I have triple the gain. If I 10 times the frequency, I have 10 times the gain, and so on. Yeah? Since I know this behavior of this, of this d part here, I only have to, and I know at omega d I have a gain of 1, I only have to find out how much more is omega g. Yeah? So we want to calculate the following omega g divided by omega d. I want to know how much more is omega g compared to omega d. And if I now write this, 1 divided by d divided by 1 divided by k, I end up, book, book, k divided by t. Yeah. So I know omega g is factor k divided by t higher than omega d. Since here is the gain factor 1, and I have this factor higher, here must be 1 multiplied by kd, so we are ending up at k divided by t here. Yeah? 
we're ending up at exactly this value. Yeah? Totally different approach. Totally different approach. Same result. Here we calculated it. Out of this, we go into frequency unlimited, kt, with the mark. And here, our approach was simply to overlap both transfer function functions in the border plot and having exactly the same result. Huh? Remarkable. So how does the total transfer function now look like? Here we're going to behave like a D element and then we are slowly, here we again have this factor square root of 2, huh? we slowly transfer to the horizontal and then we will remain horizontal. Huh? This is how this looks like with this characteristic frequency omega g and here we are at the at the Durchtrittsfrequenz, yeah? omega t. Yeah? Omega t is 1 divided by k, omega g is 1 divided by t, and we end up at k divided by t. How does it look like now for the argument? Well, two things multiplied will result into adding the argument, right? So, this line here, is the pt1 element, this line here is the d element. If I now add to the pt1 element 90 degree, I am exactly where we are. So here at the characteristic frequency, we will have my, uh, plus 45 degree in this case, because we shifted by 90 degree, plus 90 degree, and we are ending up in a basically parallel curve uh, to this one. We start at 90 degree, will drop and then slowly but never exceeding below zero. So these two lines are parallel. It looks like a PT1 element but shifted by 90 degree. This here, remarkable, it also looks like a PT1 element but mirrored. Okay. Yeah. This is the TT1 element. Okay. And this is much closer to a really existing system than a pure D element. Yeah. So the DT1 element is also called uh, a really existing derivation element. Yeah. But it's also idolized. Yeah. Next time we are again talking about another another standard element, another combined element. Next time we're talking about a so-called PD element. Yeah? So we're combining a, combining a P element, a yeah? proportional element, and a D element, derivation element, with to each other. However, this time we did it serial, next time we do it in parallel. Yeah? We'll see what the result then is, how this behaves. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.